Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the What Matters Most series, in which I am finding out what aspect of a car affects its one lap pace the most. To do so, we are comparing the one lap pace of a Honda NSX around Laguna Seca on Gran Turismo 4. Last time out, it was the effect the driver had that I scrutinised by comparing me, my B-spec driver, and Jeremy Clarkson. And in the end, we found out that I was the fastest and Jeremy Clarkson was the slowest by a good 1.4 seconds behind me per lap. But anyway, this time it's the tyres I'm scrutinising. Just how much of an effect do they have on the car's performance? Well, if you asked me before I made this video, I just said that they make a lot of difference, but to be honest, you have no idea. So firstly, what jobs do tyres do? Well, they do help to improve the car's acceleration and deceleration, if the tyres are good enough. But obviously the main job is to get the car around the corners. So the grippier or the wider the tyre, the better the car's cornering performance, and so the quicker it can get around corners. So in short, a better tyre allows you to brake later and carry more speed down that straight and lose less time braking, carry more speed around the corner and be going fast on the exit of the corner thanks to the extra speed you took going around it. So needless to say that the tyres are pivotal to the car's performance, after all, it is that bit of the car that is actually in contact with the road. So let's look at the tyres on offer, and in fact there are a lot on offer in Grand Turismo 4 with three standard tyres, three sports tyres, five racing tyres, and the two off-road tyres, but obviously those off-road tyres don't apply to us. So I won't be using every tyre, as that will take forever and will get quite boring. So I'm going to be using two standard tyres, firstly the economy tyres, which are the worst in the game and are so rubbish they don't even cost anything to buy. And then we got the road tyres. One sports tyres, which obviously the standard sports medium tyres the car was fitted with and were used for the original benchmark time in the series. Then three racing tyres, so the super hard, which is the hardest of the racing tyres, medium and then qualifying or super soft tyres which are the best in the game despite their awful range. So let's start from the bottom up with the economy tyres. As I previously mentioned, these tyres are free as they are that bad. They also aim at saving the environment, which is something I don't really give a damn about, especially when it impacts on the lap time of my NSX. And a quote from the game's description of the tyre is very interesting, and something which I just felt I had to point out. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, it reads, This tyre does not aim to provide maximum grip, but caters for increased ride quality and reducing road noise, which is not what I wanted to hear. So I took them out for a spin, and they were god-awful. There was no grip, turning, braking, and in fact actually every time I did brake, I locked up, costing me valuable seconds. Also I pushed the tyres to their maximum so easily. Just listen to all of his tyre squeal. But finally, I was able to drag these tyres around for a time of 1 minute 49.9 seconds, over 10 seconds slower than the standard time for this series, which was set on only sports medium tyres. Then we go on to the road tyres. The description for these reads that they are suitable for sports car racing that features grip levels near that of a sports tyre. Sounds promising. And in fact they were. They were substantially better than the economy tyres that I didn't know what to do with all the extra grip. There was such a big improvement on the time that these tyres were 7.4 seconds a lap quicker than the economy tyres and only 2.8 seconds off of the standard sports medium tyres. Amazing, frankly. Speaking of those sports medium tyres, they were the standard ones that were used to set the benchmark time, so we already know the time they set, which is a 139.7 and, and the lap was shown in the last video. These were good tyres with lots of grip on them and were ideal for a fast road car such as this one. Then we go to some popular tyres and probably the ones I used most throughout the game, racing super hard. These are ideal for endurance races as they have a great endurance 
meaning you don't have to come to the pits as often. However, that does mean you have less grip in the short term, such as now. But despite the sheer endurance focus of these tyres, they still beat the semi-professional nature of the sports medium tyres by a full 4 seconds, showing that these tyres are the bargain of the century to improve both speed and endurance on the standard tyres that much. Now we have the penultimate set of tyres, racing mediums. As you can already have guessed, they have much more grip than the sport counterparts and are possibly the best overall tyre in the game. But sheer one lap pace is a different story and with these I was able to set a lap of 133.4, a fantastic lap and was 6.3 seconds faster than the sport counterpart and the benchmark time for the series. Now finally we have the quickest tyres in the game, the racing qualifying or the racing super softs. The reason this game chooses to call them the qualifying tyres is because that's really all they're good for. The game even says that they have a lifespan of 2-4 to four laps, but that does mean they will have ample amounts of grip, especially when we're still only in a road car, remember. Also, as we're only in a one lap scenario, and so under these circumstances, these tyres are ideal. So on to the lap. With these tyres we were able to set a sub 90 seconds lap, albeit only just, but with a lap of 1 minute 29.7 seconds, which is absolutely amazing. And it just shows the sheer gulf from the slowest tyres in the game to the quickest. The gap is in fact 20.2 seconds between the economy tyres and the racing super softs, which is absolutely unbelievable. Obviously this doesn't include endurance, but that's still unbelievable. Or if you want to look at it from the perspective of comparing it to the standard tyres fitted onto the car, the sports mediums, it's still a 10 second gap. So despite the awful endurance of these tyres, it would probably be quicker to use these tyres and come into the pits more often than it would be to use a slower sport or standard tyres. So that is the lap times. But let's look at it in a bit more detail. I said how tyres improve a car's braking distance and here is the proof. And this is also a big clue as to how there was such a big difference in the lap times. And to compare braking distances I'm going to see how far away from the second corner I broke on each set of tyres. So onto the economy tyres where I start braking a fair way before the braking board says 4 on it. And that's at 118 miles an hour. As you can see that's way off the corner and that's why I lost so much time and it's just one of the problems I had to deal with with these terrible tyres along with the brakes locking up and the lack of cornering capabilities etc. Although you have got to remember I did save the environment. Even in a virtual way. But anyway onto the road tyres and I thought these were the surprise of the episode and I think it proves here to be honest there was substantially more grip and I break an equal distance away from the free board than the economy tyres were from the four board and that's not to mention I broke at 120 miles an hour not 118 so onto the sports medium tyres or the standard tyres fitted to the car and on these tyres I've just gone past the free board to break even later and lose even less time than I had done on the less grippy at standard tyres then onto the racing hard tyres here I break much closer to the two board than I was in the sports medium tyres, thanks to the extra grip. Now onto the racing mediums, on these very grippy tyres, I actually broke too early, as despite the extra grip, I start breaking at the same spot as I did on the racing super hards. Still incredibly late, but it shows how I underestimated the sheer amounts of grip that these tyres have. Now finally, one of the grippiest tyres of all, the racing super softs. On these ultra grippy tyres, I'm able to brake it as late as the number 2 board, and that's a blistering 124 miles an hour. So on these tyres, I was on the throttle longer than on the economy tyres, had more speed down the straight and was able to brake later. Not to mention carry more speed around the corner, as we'll see later. But here is a side by side comparison of the braking points from the economy tyres to the racing super softs. Showing just how big of a difference you can make to your braking points with just your tyres, and that's forgetting about the brakes. So now finally for this video, the corner speed, which is also a big clue as to how there was such a big gulf in the lap times. 
For this key test of the tyre's performance, I've taken a still from each tyre around turn 4 and seeing their speed and the position on the track when exiting the corner. So the economy tyres. On these tyres I'm seeing exiting the corner at only 57 miles an hour. I'm just about to skid off track thanks to the lack of grip, which is why I'm on the kerb at the exit of the corner. So despite the low speed, I'm still running off wide thanks to the lack of grip these tyres have. But the low speed and the very wide track position show just how terrible the handling of this car was thanks to the tyres. So onto the road tyres, and on these tyres I didn't even brake for the corner. This still shows me get back on the power mid corner on the inside of it and massively quicker at 73 miles an hour. And this screenshot we see me get on the kerb on the exit where the economy tyres only just regain traction but instead on these tyres I'm at 77 miles an hour which are 20 miles an hour faster than the economy tyres and obviously that made a difference to my end speed at the end of the straight from 103 miles an hour on the dreadful economy tyres to an amazing 111 miles an hour on the road tyres and bearing in mind the road tyres are still standard tyres they're not designed for racing or for setting blistering lap times they're just road tyres and to have that big of a difference from the economy tyres is astounding. And now, I don't want to bore you with the rest of the tyres because I'm sure you get the point of how big of a difference grippier tyres make. But I'll show you the grippiest tyres, or the super soft tyres. I was able to go at 95 miles an hour on the entry to the corner, flat out, and on the exit of the corner I was also doing 95 miles an hour, again, also flat out. So what was a near struggle to even stay on the track in the economy tyres became a near flat out corner in the grippiest tyres in the game, the super softs. And all of this video has shown the true power and influence the tyres have on the car's performance. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I know it was a bit of a long one but this will probably be the longest in the whole series due to the diversity of the tyres available and just how important they are and how much they do. But in the end we found that the tyres have a 20.2 seconds a lap difference from the best tyres in the game to the worst tyres in the game, or 10 seconds a lap from the best tyres in the game to the standard ones fitted on the cars, which is the sports mediums. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stick around for the next one in this series of What Matters Most in which I'll be finding out how much of an effect Nitrous has on the car's performance. So that should be a very interesting episode, and I hope to see you for that one. So I'll see you then.